Hey, what's up guys? Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're going to talk about IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. We're going to talk about the five main effects of this hormone in the body and primarily as it relates to exercise and training. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to lay the groundwork, insulin-like growth factor 1 is a hormone. It's produced in the liver and then it's transported in the bloodstream and then has effects on the muscle, bone, and other things that we're going to talk about. So, why do we call it IGF-1? Well, we call it insulin-like growth factor because it's a growth factor of a bunch of polypeptides and it has insulin-like properties, which we're going to talk about. And the 1 refers to binding protein 1. There are binding proteins 1 through 6, but this is one that's extensively studied and has these effects on muscle tissue that we're going to talk about. And then one other important thing to know is that IGF-1 is mediated by growth hormone. So we see after exercise a testosterone response followed by a growth hormone response and then a delayed insulin-like growth factor release. So after exercise, there's a delayed response of 8 to 24 hours before we really see the effects of insulin-like growth factor. And although growth hormone is the primary hormone that's stimulating the release of IGF-1 from the liver, it's also affected by testosterone as well as thyroid hormone. Okay, so now that we know how growth hormone is actually synthesized and released in the bloodstream and controlled and regulated, now we can talk about its functions. So function number one is protein anabolism. So the word anabolism or anabolic means growth. So we're talking about protein growth or muscle protein synthesis here. And IGF-1 does play a role in muscle growth. In a previous video about the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy, you may have heard me refer to mechano growth factor as something that helps stem cells differentiate into new muscle cells or form proteins. So IGF-1 within the muscle is actually referred to as mechano growth factor and that actually has an important relationship in the muscle protein synthesis response. So when we are building muscle proteins, we have undifferentiated stem cells, which are just cells that don't have differentiated nuclei yet, but they will become muscle cells by mechanical growth factor influencing the way that stem cells turn into new muscle cells. This isn't entirely understood, but IGF-1 is thought to play a role in that process. Now, there are actually two sides to the equation of muscle building. We have muscle protein synthesis, which is building, and then we have muscle protein degradation, which is breakdown. And not only does IGF-1 have an effect on muscle protein building, but it also inhibits or decreases proteolysis or protein breakdown. So proteo is meaning protein and lysis is meaning splitting or breakdown. So there are enzymes involved in muscle protein breakdown and IGF-1 is helping to inhibit those enzymes which would decrease the breakdown of proteins. So if you think about this as an equation of a certain amount of building and a certain amount of breakdown, IGF-1 is influencing both the building and the breakdown of proteins to cause a greater net protein synthesis. Before we get into the rest of these, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Okay, so effect number three is actually the inhibition of glucocorticoids. So there's a lot to break down here. Glucocorticoids have a number of functions, and one of them that we're primarily going to talk about is the response in the liver of gluconeogenesis. So if we increase glucocorticoids, we would actually increase the process of going from amino acids back to glucose. So that's the process of gluconeogenesis, or making new glucose. And we could, again, break down proteins into amino acids and then turn those proteins into glucose through that process. And glucocorticoids would facilitate that process of gluconeogenesis. But IGF-1 actually inhibits glucocorticoids. And what this would result in is sparing of amino acids. So less conversion of amino acids to glucose. And this would be a positive effect for muscle building. All right, the fourth function that we're going to talk about is actually increasing bone mineral density. So while growth hormone has an effect on, for example, collagen synthesis, IGF-1 has more of an effect on muscle and bone mineral density. So this is the process of actually building bone through loading bone and then osteoblasts and osteoclasts actually making more and bigger and stronger bone. And then lastly, what we're going to talk about here, the fifth function of IGF-1 is increased insulin sensitivity. So when we eat food and we digest carbohydrate, that puts glucose into our bloodstream. When that glucose enters our bloodstream, that would increase the insulin response. So as we have blood sugar increase, we also have an insulin response, which is telling that blood sugar where to go. Now, 
if we increase the insulin sensitivity, that's gonna actually help us promote insulin release and promote glucose uptake and all the functions of insulin, which brings us back to the name insulin-like growth factor. Um, so if we think about it, it has insulin-like properties to increase insulin sensitivity as well as growth pro properties. So hopefully that helps tie together that insulin-like growth factor has insulin-like properties and different growth properties for muscle and bone. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at The Movement System for more helpful and informational content. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.